Good morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. I'm Paul Clark, and today we're going to have a look at painting this little wooden fishing boat in watercolour. So it's not too difficult. So even if you're a total beginner, come along and we'll paint this together step by step. Let's get going. Okay, just three brushes I'm using today. My big mop for wetting the paper, my trusty number 12 round, and my number three rigger. I've got a nice sheet of Bockingford 250 pound cold press paper, nice and stiff. I've got my normal three colors today, my cobalt blue, alizarin crimson, and cadmium yellow. And as a treat, we're gonna use some Prussian blue. Okay, just two mixes to start with. This is a 50-50 mix of my Cobalt Blue and my Prussian Blue. Then a grey made from 60% Cobalt, 40 Alizarin and 10% Cat Yellow. For my drawing, just keep it to the basic shape because you really don't want to inhibit what you do with the brush. Off we go, big mop and wet the complete sheet. In we go with our blue wash, no mucking about, a nice graduated wash coming from the top and up from the bottom. Make sure you get this nice sense of light in the middle. For this next stage we have to move really quite quickly. I'm going to dry my brush off and then use my brush to lift out the colour that's still wet in this area of the boat. Now we could mask out this area with masking fluid, but I find this method much cleaner and easier just by lifting out the color and it only works when the wash is still wet. I have a separate video on the techniques of lifting out if you're interested. You'll find the details in the description below. Now drop into our background, which should hopefully still be wet, some darker blue movement in the water. Now for the background, I'm just going to pick up some of our premix grey and drop it up there in the top left hand corner, just to suggest some kind of forest or trees over here in the distance. Splatting a little bit in for some texture. Okay, so let this totally dry off and have a little practice at some of these nice ripple effects. So you want some quick movements so you get thin to thick to thin. Nice quick movements with the wrist. And as we move to the foreground, we can just strengthen the colour a little bit. Even darker still when we get to the bottom of the page. So up here in the middle distance, I'm just softening some of the edges of these ripples with my finger. Just a little bit of detail here to suggest the, uh, the bank 
and some perhaps some trees or some kind of foliage just up here. It's all very loose and abstract. And I'm giving it a quick spray with some water just to get a bit of movement in the paint. Just decided that I want a little mooring post so I'm just drawing that in quickly. Let's get the body of the boat done. Same blue again, a nice wet wash all over this side. Now for a bit of dark shadow, I'm dropping into the wet wash, this much darker blue. Now what I've done here is just added a little bit of Payne's Grey into that blue to give it a bit more strength. A lighter blue for all the interior of the boat. Now while it's still wet, drop in some darker blue and some little dollops of clean water just to create some nice effects. A little bit of pale blue detail here and there. Now, make sure it's dry, then we're going to get a little bit of our alizarin crimson and we're going to paint the underside of the boat. Now we could go straight over top of the dark blue because we wouldn't see a bright red here, it would be in shadow. So just putting the red on top of the blue works really well. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with a green mix for the stripe along the top. Now just dry my brush with a paper towel and then lift out to create some highlights on the green stripe. And you can do the same with a little dab of tissue. Now for the lovely dark reflection under the boat. Now I've used the same blue again, but as before I've put a lot of Payne's Grey into it to give it some real strength because we want a lovely dark contrast here between the side of the boat and the water. Move your brush freely and as quickly as you can and don't forget to try and leave some little lighter blue areas coming through to give that little sense of sparkle. Okay, so I don't have a crisp line between the reflection and the side of the boat. I'm painting some dark up into the side of the hull and then with some clean water just softening the edges. While we've got the colour on our brush, we might as well put in the reflection on the mooring post. The thing to remember with reflections, if you have an angled post, then its reflection will angle back in the opposite direction. Okay, with the same dark blue now, I'm just putting in little suggestions here and there of detail and then softening some of the edges with clean water. It's all very loose and impressionistic. Now with a paler blue I'm just putting in some little bits of detail here and there on the side of the hull. Keep it loose, keep it moving, little dots and dabs rather than continual lines.
quickly paint the mooring post in. In this area here, I want to suggest that the water is shallower, so I want to paint in a goldy colour to suggest that we can see the bottom of the river. We re-wet our paper with some clean water, being very careful not to pull up any of the blue, and then drop in the gold straight away into the wet. We can add a few little darker goldy colours in there. Now we're nearly there but what I want to do is get my number three rigger and just start putting in in a dark wash just some fine details, just some little bits here and there. Being careful not to overwork it, that's the biggest danger. So just keep these little flicks and little dabs, don't outline anything, we can put the cable in. Little dabs here and there. So I've just decided I want to just bring out some of the water with a slightly darker tone. So I'm just putting a very watery transparent wash here and there in just a few of these areas. Now for a bit of smelly old seaweed I'm just going to loosely paint in some downward strokes, drop in a bit of colour side of brush, drag it down, end of brush, score into it, just to create some texture. Now make sure it's totally dry, you can use a hairdryer if you want. Now another favourite technique of mine is just lifting out some of the paint with a piece of damp tissue. Just create some lovely glistening effects. Just pull it out and you get some lovely soft edges. Okay, now with a lovely white pastel pencil, we can just put in a few of the little highlights and a few of the little details. And I'm just, as you can see, just flicking about here and there, putting little dots in. I don't know what this is along the side of the boat, some hooks or something, but just getting in some detail. The little reflection of the cable. All we've got left to do is sign it, frame it, sell it for millions. So, I really hope that you've enjoyed today's lesson and that you've learned something from it. If you have, please like, please subscribe and let us know down in the comments how you got on. I'd love to hear from you. So, take care everybody. I'm going to leave you with a few paintings of other boats that I've done over the years. And happy painting. See you all again soon. Bye for now. <music>